This show is brought to you by the Chiropractic Broadcast Network. Check us out on the web at chiropracticbroadcastnetwork.com. And hello, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Tuning Into Health. My name is Dr. Chad Rolfson, and I do believe this is episode number 172 of Tuning Into Health with Dr. Chad. <clears throat> I'm your friendly neighborhood chiropractor right here from Des Moines, Iowa, and I've got I've got a few things to share today. It's going to be hopefully a little shorter show for you. Uh, but uh, I tell you what, we've got a forbidden indulgence could actually spare you a heart attack. What could that be, huh? Cruel science experiment. They want to force you to take. What's this? What's happening? What the American Medical Association's up to something. They want to force something on you. Iowa to require mandatory whooping cough vaccine for children. Because it doesn't work in the first place. Baby's colic linked to mother's migraines. I can think they can contribute to it, but they don't think they can cause it, folks. Something else going there. Vaccine exemptions. Do they really put non-vaccinated children at risk? And 13 things your pediatrician won't tell you from the Reader's Digest. Hey, how about this? Fructose. Not linked to extra weight gain in a report. I don't know about that. And antibodies. Not hard bodies. Make women drool. I don't know. We've got some funny things going on today. Oh, anyway. What do you think? I'm waiting for this music to get done. (laughs) No, I got to speak in front of a bunch of realtors today. And so uh, I had something prepared and then I pulled something out of my behind and I'll I'll try to do that today. But uh, we'll be back right after this. I don't know. I've got to speak in front of a group of Iowa Reality uh, folks today, and uh, I had something prepared. I took about two hours to prepare for something yesterday, and and then um, I was going to a Lunch and Leads group, and about five minutes before I went to the Lunch and Leads, I thought I'd take it in a different direction, so I gave them two versions, and um, they chose the, the uh, how would you say, the last-minute preparation uh, over the, the, the one I prepared. So the one I prepared was too detailed. So, and, and the brevity is a soul of wit, right? Anyway, hey, we got antibodies, not hard bodies, make women drool. And they have pictures of um, uh, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, and uh, George Clooney. But, uh, and it says that women may drool over George Clooney, Brad Pitt, and uh, DiCaprio, but their lust may be more for these guy, macho guys' immune systems than their pretty faces and chiseled abs. A new research suggests men with high levels of sex hormone testosterone are seen more hunky, and these uh, same men have stronger immune systems, researchers report Tuesday in the Journal of the Nature Communications. The findings suggest that women may be attracted to uh, ma- uh, manly facial types because the macho look Signals good health. Researchers led by Fiona Moore at the Alberta, Alberta University in the United Kingdom recruited more than 74 Latvian men in early 20s and to give blood samples. And they basically, um, oh my goodness, it's a promotion for the hepatitis B vaccine. 
Uh, see, I'm reading this stuff when I'm when, uh, for the first time when I'm reading it to you. Blood samples right before one month uh, after their first dose of hepatitis V vaccine. The vaccine triggers an immune system to create antibodies against the viruses. The researchers measured these levels of antibodies with the testosterone levels and the levels of stress hormone cortisol. They, I bet they had increased stress hormones being shot with that stuff. Next, uh, 94 Latvian women also in their early 20s rated photographs of each man on a 10-point scale of their attractiveness. And the researchers then looked for the links between the immune response as measured. I wonder if there's a difference between artificial and natural immunity, meaning those who are adjusted have stronger immune systems than those who are not adjusted. So, but this is a, it, it's a farce. It's got, it, it's, it's sex sells, I guess. So they're, they're trying to promote uh, vaccines with that. So I'll have that posted on facebook.com slash Rolfson. Fructose not linked to extra weight gain. What's this? <clears throat> a little uh, extra simple sugar in your diet probably won't make you pack on the pounds as long as you cut down on other carbs that make up for it. A newly anal uh, analysis of past suggest studies suggests researchers found that people who consume extra fructose baked into breads, sprinkled into drinks, didn't gain any extra weight compared to those who had other types of carbohydrates instead when they ate the same number of calories. On the other hand, when the study participants supplemented a standard diet with extra calories from straight fructose, they did not gain weight. I wonder if that has anything to do with high fructose, corn syrup. So um, they're talking about if when you have extra carbohydrates, you're going to gain more weight and whatnot. So, but I've seen the advent of obesity happening with the, the inclusion of high fructose corn syrup in freaking everything, including your bread and your sodas and all that type of stuff. I think they're doing something different with the, the um, throwback Pepsis and the throwback Mountain Dews because when it first came out, it really tastes good. I mean, it was like, gosh, you're back in the 70s and you're, you know, enjoying a, a I know it's bad for you, but you got to indulge sometimes. You can't be, you know, you can't be Mr. Perfect or Mrs. Perfect all the time. And, um, of course, they drink water and all that type of stuff, too. <laughs> Somebody tried to say H2O is the only way to go. And I'm like, bull crap. <laughs> and we drink all sorts of things. You know, it's just what you can balance. <clears throat> but the... Um, the uh, Pepsi throwback products, the Mountain Dew throwbacks, um, taste a lot better. And then suddenly I had one the other day, and it tasted like crap. And I'm like, why do they keep – it's like they can't, they can't work with something. I mean, they can't keep with something that works. They have to alter what they have to, you know. So I, I think that they're tr slowly add, adding back high fructose corn syrup. Um, it's, I guess it's cheaper, but um, – I don't know. Uh, uh, the last, and I don't have very much uh, Mountain Dew, uh, you know, because you have a Mountain Dew, and if it's throwback, good. It's natural sugar, right? Well, the last two Mountain Dews I had, I, I couldn't stand the taste. It was, it was bad. Hey, 13 things your pediatrician won't tell you. This is from the Reader's Digest. Um, good Morning America is teaming up with Reader's Digest on a special series of 13 things your pediatrician won't tell you. Your, your blank won't tell you. We kicked it off this month with a peek inside the professional house cleaners. Blah, blah, blah. 13 things your house cleaners won't call, tell you. Now it's your pediatrician. So, so basically here it goes. Number one, want to avoid the wait? Schedule your appointment for the middle of the week and ask for the first time slot in the morning right after, or right after lunch. Even those studies show antibiotics and ear infections are rarely better than watching and waiting for kids over the age of two. Many of uh, pediatricians prescribe them anyway. We want to feel like we're doing something. Now that is the height of irresponsibility and uh, it means your doctor's a quack if they're prescribing antibiotics for ear infections. Um, yeah, if I prescribed antibiotic a few days later, your child feels better, I feel like a genius. Uh, want to make vaccines less painful for your child? Ask if you can breastfeed while we give your infant the shots. Um, actually, they're trying to discourage uh, breastfeeding because it cuts down on the vaccine's effectiveness. Don't ask uh, if I'll take a quick look at a sibling. 
who doesn't have an appointment if you're my okay uh, sometimes we have less than 10 minutes per patient so we make most of our time ask about the most pressing problems first if you have a lot of questions request an extra long appointment uh, even though I tell you that to let your baby cry himself back to sleep once he's older don't ask me if I've followed that advice with my own kids he didn't or she didn't um, if you have an urgent concern at the front desk uh, with no appointments available ask the nurse to explain your situation often they can work you in blah 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 delaying treatment only makes your child suffer uh, don't delay, don't delay treating your child because uh, you want me to see the symptoms People do this a lot. I don't give them Tylenol because I didn't want the, them want, want you to feel the fever. Um, I usually don't use a nebulizer because I wanted to, you to hear the wheezing. Trust me, uh, believe me, the child has a fever. I'll believe you if the child has a fever and wheezing. So they're trying to cut the immune defenses right there. So germs are everywhere. If you're sick in the waiting room and, and in the well waiting room, but no studies show it really makes a difference. Sure, we have sick in the waiting room and well in the waiting room, but no studies show it really makes a difference. Germs are everywhere. We can't disinfect each patient. Wow. Oh. wonder if they uh, uh, do that for the flu shot, huh? Uh, don't tell your kids the doctor will give them a shot if he doesn't behave. <laughs> uh, you know what? I had some parents um, try to pass that one off uh, to their kids and and uh, to make them behave, he says, he'll, he'll give you an adjustment. And the kid would go, oh. I'm like, stop doing that. Stop doing that. I, you know, if you wouldn't, if you just get them adjusted regularly, they'd say, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. We can do this. No biggie. But uh, some parents use it as a, uh, as a means to uh, scare their kids. And it really pisses me off, to tell you the truth. Vaccines exemptions. Uh, do they really put non-vaccinated children at risk? Here's natural news. Parents who exercise a vaccine exemption for their children are often more ridiculed for putting their own children and others at risk. However, legally and medically, unvaccinated children do not pose a significant risk to themselves or any other one, anyone else. Alternative vaccines show views support for this assertion, but the reasoning for this article comes straight from the mainstream vaccine beliefs, accepted medical practices, and current law. So first, from a legal perspective, 48 state legislatures, federal agencies, and all the U.S. territories uh, prefer religious exemptions to immunizations. Uh, the state legislatures and federal agencies provide these exemptions and are presumed to have considered whether or not the exercise of these exemptions would pose a significant health risk. They would not have to uh, have enacted these exemption laws if their exercise would pose a significant health risk. Thus, there is a legal presumption that the exercise of the vaccine exemption does not pose a significant risk to anybody. That will be on Facebook.com slash Ralston if anybody wants to read that. Baby's colic is linked to mother's migraines. This is in Science Daily, February 20th. A study of mothers who, who and their young babies by neurologists, so it's got to be true, the University of California in San Francisco have shown that mothers who suffer from migraines are often more than twice as likely to have babies with colic than mothers without a history of migraines. <clears throat> um, the work raises the questions of whether colic may be severely symptoms of migraines and therefore whether reducing stimulation may help. Just reducing light or noise can alleviate the migraine pain. The significant because the excessive crying is one of the most common triggers for shaken baby syndrome, which can cause death and brain damage and severe disability. Also, vaccines are a part of that, too. Um, we can understand what is making... If we can understand what the making the baby cry, then we'll be able to protect them from this dangerous outcome. Well, I tell you what, get the baby adjusted. Get the baby adjusted, get the mom adjusted, and keep them under chiropractic care, and you won't have to worry about colic, and more than likely, their migraines will disappear. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. And yeah, you don't have to take dangerous drugs. Yeah. Colic. I, I've had babies come in here that, that the pediatrician will put them on adult form of Tagamet for their colic. Um, I've even had one suggest that they use an antidepressant 
for their infant who has colic. That's a damn quack. Hey, guess what? Iowa to require mandatory whooping cough vaccine for children. <clears throat> uh, number of cases of pertussis known as whooping cough increases in the state of Iowa. State health officials are making vaccinations throughout the uh, school systems mandatory. Local nurses said that the move helps students stay healthy and keeps the classroom. The rationale behind this, of course, is that we see uh, cases of pertussis that are occurring in schools. Basically, they're occurring uh, in all the vaccinated populations. Do you know why? Well, they just recently found out that the, um, the effectiveness of the whooping cough vaccine, which has been given for decades, wanes off in about three years. So every seven-year-old that you know and above um, basically ran around with um, no, no whooping cough. And they usually got it later in their um, um, adulthood um, or adolescence. And it was a, uh, what is it called? A 90-day cough, a 100-day cough. Um, and it was a whooping cough. It was pertussis. So they'll get it one way or another, even if they're vaccinated, because uh, the um, looks like the vaccine is failing. It always has been failing. And they went around with a false presumption that <clears throat> all these children were protected for life. Well, no. It, pertussis has always been in our population. It always will be. And uh, any antibiotics that you throw it at won't do any good. A cruel science experiment they want to force you to take. The American Medical Association virtual mentor is concerned with the concurrent enrollment of vaccine trials. It's extremely low because people don't freaking trust them. I wouldn't. The proposed solution, creating a federal law which would force individuals to make mandated choice to participate in vaccine trials. Such law would require drug companies a more or less guaranteed supply of human guinea pigs. Screw that. And I know many people who would say that their, their bullets make bigger holes than their needles. So I'd love to see somebody try to pass a mandated thing like that and see if it holds muster to the Constitution. Forbidden indulgence could actually spare you a heart attack. Actually, we're talking about salt here. It's been long trusted uh, staple for human Across the globe, in ancient times, salt was literally worth its weight in gold, and African and European explorers could trade an ounce of salt for an ounce of gold. Roman soldiers were also paid in salt, hence the modern word salary. Oh, sal is Latin for the word salt. And the expression uh, worth his salt or earning his salt. Far being from harmful, high-quality salt is actually essential for life. But the United States and many other developed countries, salt has been vilified as a primary cause of high blood pressure and heart disease. These latter claims have failed to be proven conclusively and have been uh, purported benefits of low-salt diets. Now, <clears throat> the Weston Price Foundation is trying to set the record straight and has warned the U.S. Food and Drug Administration that further plans for salt restriction pose serious health threats to human health. And uh, I tell you what, the table salt that we have today is absolute garbage. There's a lot of silicon in there, and there's a lot of additives that don't need to be in there. So if you look at natural sea salt, uh, it tastes much better. It can add uh, more robust flavor to your food, and I would suggest that when it comes to, you know, if, you, if you're a salt addict, if you like salt, yeah, I love sunflower seeds and all that type of stuff. That's my only vice, I would say. But otherwise, you know what? This is a short one for today. It's only 20 minutes, but uh, I want you to have a great one. And we're going to close out with this from Don Ross from his album Breakfast for Dogs. It's crazy. Because you know what? Five years ago, you would have called me crazy for saying, you know what? Salt has health benefits. You know? So open up your mind. Open up your mind. What's wrong with that? If you want the U.S. government to mandate vaccine research on human population, you know, well, call me crazy. But otherwise, if you don't think that's a good idea, I'll get with the frickin' program, people. Start paying attention. That's why I'm here. I'll be here tomorrow morning giving you the health news that you can use, and we'll see you later.